Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Um, today's art project is going to be a um, abstract, intuitive abstract. And what I'm using is, this is uh, just some thick cardstock and I gessoed it. And it's 11 by 11 because the original sheet I think was 11 by 17 or something. I like to do a border just so it gives me something to look at. Let me see. Okay. I was using some blue painter's tape, but I like this, the regular masking tape better. Um, now you can't put this directly on the paper or it will probably tear it. That's that. My paper's ready. And I have some drop paper underneath. You're also going to need some marking uh, tools. Some. Uh, this is just a little gift card. Uh, this is like a hook for knitting thing. Some pencils, uh, color pencils. This is a little, I forget what you call these. Well, you know, it's a little pointy thing with a ball on the end. Stylus, yes, a stylus. So I have that. Look around, with whatever you have. And I got some uh, palette knives here, some plastic palette knives. If I need that, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that or not. My paint palette, I picked a variety of bright springy colors. I have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, well, 18 colors and one black. I like using this uh, Createx airbrush colors because it's very, it's very inky and very pigmented. And the middle is just a big blob of gesso. And you can use gesso or just white paint. So um, I'm not going to go over all the different brands and names of the colors I will put it in the description list each color name and brand if you're interested but please don't go out and buy paint just because someone on YouTube shows it to you I, I know I, I don't get me started I have so much art supplies and craft supplies because somebody on YouTube had it and I had to have it. So control yourself. Okay, use the paints you have. Use as many different colors as you have so you don't have to worry too much about mixing because you want to do an intuitive uh, art. You want to do this fast. You don't want to think, okay? So, and as far as brushes go, I'm using small brushes mostly because this is small paper. And I might use one big one, but some little, uh, these are just some flats. And I might use a round. And I have some um, detail. This is a script brush. A couple of script brushes. I might use those. I don't know. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah. I got these little tiny details the other day. Because these don't last. They they get messed up really easy. So, But I don't think I'm going to go into details today. But anyways, so let's, uh, let's start. Okay, I want to make sure I am well in the frame here. And you can see my palette. At least half my palette. Mostly the blues. I have an inspiration picture. Oh, I'm not going to show it here. It's from uh, Pinterest. It's just an uh, inspiration picture. I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to 
it's gonna look anything exactly like it so okay so where to start this is the hard part where to start first I'm gonna use a pencil and this is just a cheap little mechanical pencil and I'm just gonna make some marks I want mostly kind of like a I don't know, landscape kind of looking deal more like more stuff going on here in the middle and a little bit on the top a little bit on the bottom but mostly right here in the middle so that's just gives me a visual of what I want to do there um, I want to keep it like a floral so let's say we have some greens maybe down here where there's grass and this is just a green watercolor pencil and uh, some light blues up here in the sky kind of thing right right and then you know we're gonna have some flowers let's see we're gonna have some flowers around here in the middle some red and we're also going to do you know a little bit of green in that area too and of course you know some more blue up here and and some greens going here so this is how you find your sweet spot now your sweet spot is uh kind of hard to explain you don't want your your focal point to be right smack in the middle you want it off center a little bit so what i do is i just draw like a tic-tac-toe thing and your sweet spot should be in one of these colors corners right here so i'm, I'm kind of liking this part right here and like i said kind of going more this way so there's there's my spot making okay now i'm um, going to start with some black make sure i am in there okay let's start with some black and that's just to anchor myself and i like using this um this very inky black from createx which is a airbrush color and it's pretty much like a acrylic ink or a very fluid acrylic and I, I did put a little bit more water in it because I want it to to kind of give me I don't know some fluidity now another reason why I like to put the tape is because I like to draw outside the tape and it kind of gives me a an infinity point for some of these marks so I'm liking this area here okay now a lot of these techniques I have learned from different artists It's good to copy your favorite artist, learn how they do things, and then copy another artist, learn how they do things. Um, eventually, you're gonna start developing your own style. Now here I am just uh, marking, like I said, I kinda wanted this area to be like light and I'm picking up the light, a light blue color. I believe that's kind of like just a little bit on the turquoise. And also picking up some white paint. And, and wetting it too, just to smear it around. Now the, the colors that, the pencils that I made marks with are watercolor pencils. So they're gonna smear. And that's okay at this moment I'm still not too much sure what I'm gonna do 
And like I said right here, I want it to be more in the greens. And I have this pretty limey green. Now a lot of these colors you can make with the paints that you have. But I'd, I'd like to more or less just, just have them there already made, ready to go. And this is some white. And let's see, I'm going to pick up another blue. This is more of a darker turquoise. And this is a different light blue I'm picking up here and mixing it with some white gesso. Now I started using white gesso instead of white paint to mix and paint with. Um, I got that from another YouTuber, Betty Cross. She does some wonderful abstracts so so far I got a lot of blue up there and some green I'm gonna pick up this other green here this is a yellow I believe this is yellow gold green gold green gold by by golden which is really just a, a light mossy green And that's the only two greens I have on here, which is the lime green and that mossy green. So I want a darker, richer green. So I'm going to pick up some uh, ultramarine blue, just a little, little bit, and mix it with some bright yellow. And here I have a darker, deeper green. Now I'm wetting my brush just so I can get a little more movement. And so far all these are pretty much cool colors. If you stick to just cool colors or just warm colors while they're still all wet, you're going to be all right. And some more light blue. Okay, I'm going to pick up a different brush this time because I want to get it a little more blendy in there. Like this one, this is an old brush and I, I don't mind if it gets a little scruffed up but I'm going to pick up some this is cobalt blue and I believe this one is cobalt blue by Masters Touch which is a brand that Hobby Lobby sells and it's just a student grade kind of paint it's nothing fancy by the way, you can mix any acrylic paint together, okay? Whether you have the most expensive or the cheapest craft paints, you can mix. They, they work fine together. So dig in there, dig in your stash, find the colors that you have, and make yourself a little palette. I'm liking all the, this blue and I'm wetting my brush just so I can mix a little bit more. Oh, 
see this is turning a little bit on the muddy side so that's when I get a paper towel and this one's a little bit moist and just a rub Let's see what other colors I have. Oh, yeah, I have this uh, deep ultramarine blue, which is beautiful color. Ultramarine, when it says ultramarine, is you have to think of it as slightly on the purple side. It's a more purplish blue. Then you have your more purplish blue. You have your more greenish blues. Your greenish blues are more into the yellow, mixed with yellow. The purplish blues are more mixed with red, I suppose. Okay. Now I'm gonna go over some spots with white. I want to make sure I get every piece of paper covered, even though it's, it's already covered with gesso, so it's not going to be raw paper. Now, you could do this straight up on uh, raw paper, <laughs> not with any kind of prepping gesso or, or anything, and it would be fine. It just makes it a little bit harder. To spread your paints around because the paper itself is more absorbent okay now I'm gonna move down here with this turquoise make some spots in this area okay and I believe some more of this right here one more blue here here now I am still working with just cool colors I'm adding some water So I can, I'm going to take this bigger brush and just lightly damp it and just going to scrub a little bit here. Find this kind of like a sky line kind of thing here. It's a little bit too dark. So I'm going with my whites. But I don't want to cover it, cover up the blue completely. Just lighten it up a little bit. There we go. When you do an intuitive painting, um, you, you, what it is, you just go with your intuition, you know, and, and try not to think too much. 
just uh, just keep adding paint until you start to to see something develop. I like this green. I was mixing with this light blue up here. I'm giving it a little bit of a maybe a little bit too much. Let me put some blue up here. And I lost all my darker blues, which I do like my dark blues. Slightly wet it just to give it some some flow. There we go. And some white. Another thing to use is some um, some medium. I use glazing medium. This is says full finish by Delta Ceram Coat, and I use one of my bottle caps. Got a little bit left in here, and this helps the paint glide better. Okay. Now, I'm okay with this bottom part because uh, I have some more ideas coming over here. But the top part is a little bit crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up this, let's see, or maybe even this. Could be this. And I just just tap it in my my paint and go from top down, top down. Okay, that's more like the color I was looking for. Now with this paint still wet, I like to use a little spray bottle of water and just squirt, squirt, squirt lightly. And you can see it has, it's starting to get some little uh, bubbles, the white spots forming from that. And that gives it some, a little more dimension. Okay, I'm going to let this completely dry. I'm going to blow dry it and I'll be right back. And we're back. Okay, this is uh, pretty much dry. Definitely dry to the touch. Now I'm going to introduce some warm colors. And the first warm color I'm going to do is going to be the darkers, which is like, um, I think this quinacridone. Yeah, quinacridone magenta. And quinacridone magenta is, I believe it's this one. Oh, it's this color. 
yeah look at that see that Let's see. and this is alizarin crimson which is very close the quinacridone magenta has a little bit more purple and see, I don't know what I did with my little hmm a little cat with the gel. It must have flown. Oh, here it is. I'm going to pick up some gel. Look how this color is mixing up here with the blue. That's the magenta. Okay, so it's And this magenta is uh, translucent so you can see a little bit not so much the color behind it but the marks behind it and switching back up to some alizarin crimson Now I'm going to do some uh, pyro red. Pyro red is like bright red. Look at that. It's a beautiful color. And you can see the difference in the quality of this paint. This is um, Fluid Acrylics by Golden. See, this is Cronachidone yellow, which is almost brown. So I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white. And it's going to give me like an orangey color. Of course, we're going to have, we have to have some orange flowers in there too, right? But then again, I have an orange. That's a bright orange right there. And we need to blend that. up some more alizarin and a little bit of the aquamarine blue with alizarin crimson kind of goes into a like a purpley color let's see if I mix that a little bit better or I could just put purple. And this is a more like a lavender right there. Going back to orange. Okay. 
I'm going to lighten my orange up a little bit more. Ah, uh, yes, I like that better. I like that better. And let's see, some yellow. Yes, must have some yellow. Yellow, yellow. This is a light yellow. I believe it's a light yellow by Liquitex. Like I said, I will have a list of all the colors. So I'm going to start going a little bit lighter. And I'm going to do a kind of like a dark pink. So I have this kind of vivid pink here and I'm just going to add a little bit of magenta just to get it just a little bit more darker. Now, so far, this is looking pretty fugly. That's the thing about instinctive abstract. You, you just keep going until you got something, pretty much, right? right. Now I'm going to go and eat a lighter pink and I'm just adding white to my pink. more white to my pink. I'm going to start making more contrast here. And I'm putting my brush down and kind of twirling a little bit just to give it a shape. To twirl like that and give it a round shape. Kind of giving me that flower, that flower look. <laughs> okay, Ooh. move the table. I'm gonna switch to a little bit bigger brush like this one and see if I can make more of an impact It's a good way to make just a, a hint of a flower is by smashing the brush and letting and make, do a little wiggle and letting the brush make the mark. looks good over here where it's there's a big contrast it's 
so I'm thinking these are these are my flowers. Yeah, these are my flowers. And I'm trying to get. Another way to do is uh, just use the, the side of the brush like that. Looking at a picture that I really like. I'm not doing it exactly slightly slightly exactly like it, but coming close. Okay. Now I need to have some more this way. I'm going back to a smaller brush and try to get a little bit of color inside. Um, take some of that orange and a little bit of this Carnacadone yellow gold just to make a dark orange. Maybe I'll get a little bit of orange here. And maybe a little bit of white, huh? Let's see, I'm gonna take this and put some little drops. Oh, I like that. Okay, I might add some more later. I'm gonna pick it up and look at it. Okay, I need some blue. So I'm gonna pick up some of this cobalt. And maybe a little bit right here. blue with some white. And this is kind of a grayish blue. pick up some turquoise make some marks uh, 
turquoise on top of that orange. It looks really nice. And I'm going to put a little bit here and there. going with this light blue. Mark, mark, mark. So far, it's not looking anything like the picture that I'm looking at. That's okay. If this doesn't come out very good, I'm not going to post it. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Let's see. I'm going to make some, oops, some lines by dipping just the side of this and making some lines like that. there maybe some here like that there lime green and this is more of the yellow the the green gold and I'm gonna mix and make some darker green Okay, this is a more darker green, kind of bluish kind of green. Maybe not. not too happy with the top part so I'm gonna lighten that up with some yellow and uh, I think this is gonna be some some leaves Mm 
get there. Okay, I'm going to let this dry because it's starting to get muddy here and I want to add some more colors and maybe cover some areas that I'm not happy with. I'll be right back. Alright, and I'm back while I was blow drying, I... Maybe I should cover up some areas here that I don't like. I'm not liking this area at all. So I'm going to lower these flowers down here. And by doing that, I'm just going to use some gesso. Now, if you don't have gesso, just use regular white paint. You'll be fine. Like I said, please don't go rush out and buy all the same supplies I have for the inky black. Um, you can just add a little bit of water to your to your paint to make it more of an inky color. I don't like hmm, this area so much. But I'm gonna not completely cover it. Just making like a a mist a mist on top. Just a mist. Mist, mist, mist. This right here, come back with my this. Oh, I like that better. And then This darker red, which is the Chronocodome magenta, it's going to give me a little bit more depth. Right here. some alizarin crimson pick some of that up and this is a really messed up brush see how all the bristles are just that's perfect for this and I'm going to stop 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 right here I'm just gonna lightly 
go up just a little bit like that up here too Oh, I'm already liking that better. Going back to, let's see, I'm gonna do a round brush. And I'm gonna go with a very light pink and going back over that. But first, I'm gonna do just a very limey, very light green like this this is where we're gonna have some pretty little leaves this is the limey green That I'm not too worried about making the leaves look all that realistic. Okay? Yeah. And uh, we're going to have some leaves coming down here also. And I'm mixing the lime green with some white. And I don't know if you could tell on here, but easy way to make a leaf is by loading up your brush with paint press and down and then twist and turn press down twist and turn and that's my leaves okay not meant to be completely realistic but you get the the point years ago i took a one stroke painting class several of them actually and i learned a lot Mostly how to use your brush to get different looks, you know? I'm going underneath with this darker green, kind of like, uh, just to give it more of a, a shadow here. Where these leaves are yeah the one stroke method is the Donna Dewberry method of painting which is uh, this tool painting I think it's good to know to learn all different methods different styles from different artists because you find yourself using all that this is definitely not a one stroke painting but just that that one little thing about the leaves helped me out see yeah okay I'll clean that up now I'm going back with a very light pink. 
and that's my regular pink that I have in my palette already, which is this one here, and just mixing it with a lot of white, like so. And I'm gonna make some blobs. I'm thinking right here is a good spot for a big flower. Now, I don't think this is exactly a one stroke movement, but it's squish and pull up, squish, twist, pull up, and I'm going with some magenta right here which I'm gonna just kind of go like that okay and I don't want to make a specific flower I just want a hint of a flower and using this darker magenta here to kind of give this a little bit of shadow. And back to the lay pink. This is going to end up being a pretty long video, like always. I try to get things a little bit faster, but it's hard. I haven't figured out yet how to go uh, time lapse. Do another kind of bigger flower here. Now it's good when you're doing flowers, um, you know, just representative flower is not realistic. Try to do an uneven number of petals. Now here I got too many, but oh well, it's gonna have to do now. Mm -hmm. And Now I'm going to be doing some more like circles. There we go.
starting to look anything like it's supposed to. I'm going to go with some of this. Lagoon, Blue Lagoon, or other. Yeah, this is a light blue, and I'm just gonna do some marks here. And uh, I need to put some more yellow in here, but the yellow is not going to show up on top of those dark colors. So what I will do is some light. And we got to make some light little circles. Like this and we'll let them dry a little bit and then I'll go over it with some yellow on the top. One of the reasons too I like painting with gesso, it just seems to cover better when you make an oopsie or when you just want to knock back some of that color so you can do other colors on top, you know? Okay, now I'm going to pick up some yellow, uh, let's see if that makes a little bit more of a statement, don't have to cover every little white spot I did with yellow, but why not? One thing I noticed, I completely covered up any black in here. Put some stripes down here. I'm going to take my fan brush and I'm going to try a little something here. Dip the ends of my fan brush. And let's see, let's hope this works.
very light dip here. You know, some just some little whimsies. I did like how this one right here was kind of like going out that way so I'm gonna just make more to try to hide that there and maybe some over here I like those I like that. I like that a lot. And I'm going to dip it in some yellow and see if I can uh, just make some little yellow spots. Right, I think that's all I'm going to paint. So my next step is, I'm gonna dry this and uh, mark on top of it with some uh, pencils and stuff. All right, be right back. All right, I hope that's dry enough. I'm going to finish this off with some pit pens. And this is uh, fabric pastel pit pens. These are made with pigment inks. I got the fine, the brush. Um, this is the Balato black liner. It's also a pigment pen. And my white um, Signa, Signo Uniball white gel pen. Okay. And these will directly draw on top of here. So I'm gonna use my brush. Let me see, where's my brush? My brush one first. And what I'm gonna do with this is mostly um, do a little bit of shadowing, like in between here. I lost all my black earlier. And I'm just just want to do a little bit of shadows around here. And I'm purposely doing this very shaky. Okay. And the brush tip is, is pretty thick. It's wide. So I'm not going to do any little fine detail with this. Just give it a little bit. And what's fun about this, that it doesn't dry right away. It uh, takes this sweet little time to dry. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take this brush here, a very tiny brush, and just slightly damp it and watch this. You can smear this up. And what is it's thinning out the ink, but it's also giving you a little bit more depth. And I'm gonna push it out here. 
like so. And just kind of smear it. Just give it some shadow. You don't want the brush to be soaking wet because it's just going to dilute the ink too much. But just moist enough to smear it. With the little bit of ink I have on there, kind of smeared it over here. Wet it again. Now, once it's dry, it will be permanent. But while it's, it takes a little bit longer than your regular brush. Uh, now, just smudge, smudge, smudge. This is giving me a little bit of depth. Wow, that is a big difference right there. And I just find using the pen like this it gives me a little bit more control than usually using actual paint. If you don't have this, just uh, ink up some black paint and just use very little of it to give you some depth and if you got it too dark you just pick it up with a paper towel Wet it some more. Right there. It's almost like watercolors, but eventually it does dry permanently. I'm liking that. And I'm going to put some right here. And kind of like around this flower. A little bit going this way. And let's see how that goes. Wet my brush, had it dry a little bit. I'm going all the way in here with it, like that. And this is almost like a glaze just to give it a little bit more dimension. Okay. I'm going to pull that through the petals right here. What I like about some of these little brushes is you could hold them like you would a pencil. So they feel a little bit easier to control than if you were using more of a paint, painterly kind of thing. All right, I'm gonna go down here. Now this is the edge of the tape right there. So I'm Starting at the tape and just barely touching the painting and take my brush and smear it down.
and this is going to give me a pretty cool looking border I find this a little bit too dark so I'm gonna wet it some more and pick some up with a paper towel Now around the corners I always like to go a little bit curvy here, not go in a straight line. Okay, that looks a little bit too harsh. So I'm picking it up a little bit there. And this could be a little bit smoother. up here. This is where the line of the tape meets the painting. And smear. Now you could do this with a Stabilo pencil too. Of course it's not going to be permanent. I'm just gonna dab just a little bit of it right there, uh, maybe a little bit more right here, and kind of go around that corner, just kind of go like that. Go around here. Now I'm not going to worry about too much about being too dark down here because the colors are dark. So it's going to look nice. The contrast. It's just more on the top where it's a light color. I don't want the black line to overpower the picture right here let's take it over too much so I just wet it some more and it'll pick it up and this area is fine where it's dark and go back down here And I'm just going to help this one with my finger a little bit. Might be up a little bit too much up here. Now I took too much off. Also use a moist finger. There. Okay, I got the hot line. Now here I still want to go a little bit darker and some spots maybe here. Just do a little bit at a time. Let me see if I can get a closer look at this.
there. Drew my line. Moist brush. Just kind of wet it. See, it starts to move, kind of like a watercolor. Soften it. And go down here a little bit. Uh, too, I don't want it too dark. Just kind of like right here. See, I still have a lot of ink on the brush. Let me just smear that up right about here. And it's still going. And so I'm going to do this area right here. In the shot right there. Just put it very light, very light. Slightly in. It's a little bit too sh harsh. Okay, so here at the bottom, I want to make a little bit more of a contrast, something a little more exciting. Um, so I'm going to make these stripes. And, of course, soften them up. And start up here. Maybe some little dark spots up here. I think I need 
some more here at the bottom. Well, this is going to this is turning out to be a very long video, but I will I will take off all the blow drying, that's for sure, and well, maybe maybe something else, but I doubt it. Huh? I don't know about you guys, but when I want to learn how to paint something, I like to watch it in real time. And if I need to go faster, there's there's ways to do that on, on YouTube. Okay. See how these flowers are, are begin, beginning to be a little more abstractual now. Um, yeah, okay, is that it? Yep, okay, so I'm done with the brush. I'm going to now take a fine liner. Which is, let me make sure it's working. Yeah, this one. And I'm going to do a few little details. Let's start with the top. And I'll show you how to do this. Like, right there. Okay, let's see. I'm up to right there. So this area. Good way to keep this down is put a ruler. There we go. Now we have these these little circles here, and that's okay like that. Just kind of outlining a, a, some of it, not all of it, but just some of it, and. Just making things a little bit more noticeable because this is kind of like just, I don't know, just disappearing into the top. Okay, here are these leaves for sure. And just kind of like a, don't spend too much time on one area, but you don't want it to look perfect. You don't want it to look realistic. This is an abstractual floral. Okay. All right. I think I've got that area. I'm going to move over this way right here. Here's another one. And just you now hold hold your brush up high. I mean you 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 marker up high like that. You you don't want those lines to be uh too precious, too specific. And you don't have to outline every single thing either. Don't don't do that. Yeah, but we do need to get down here. This way. And just uh, try to do it as fast as you can, and it'll give you a little bit better 
look, you know, more sp spontaneous look. And I'm moving up here. And then I have these up here. And I might want to do some little curlies coming up. Some little curlies. Curly cues. Okay. Emphasize this. Doing the marks on a painting is uh, if you can use pins, it's really better to do wait a good eight hours at least for it to completely dry. And so I'm going through here, some of the thicker parts are still a little hard. So now I'm going to use my white. Signia pin, Signo pin, and this is a gel pin. And um, I was thinking, when I was looking at these right here. I was thinking about doing kind of like a like a little waterfall kind of thing. Not waterfall, but in the floral business. We, I, I, I am a professional floral designer, by the way. Um, we call that waterfall look because you, know, you have, and it's just little squiggly lines here, and it's just representing some little, just some little flowers kind of falling, falling from here, and you know some in the middle, and some of these darker colors here, the blues you could definitely circle those and it will be able to see these better um, and some of these petals I could just uh, do you know some little wigglies in there And in between the flowers, we do some more of these little wiggles. And right here, too. And some more wiggles. And right here, see there's some more wigglies. No, Mom. Okay. And this will highlight the flowers a little bit more. Um, this, I think, needs a little something down here. And, and you see, I'm just kind of like... Just a scribble, scribble, scribble. Okay, and then I'm going to make some of these more prominent, and even maybe do some little spots here, here. All right. The mark making to me makes it. It really makes it. And I think, well, let's see. This is very easy to erase too, because it is gel and it stays wet a little bit longer. You see how my hand is kind of, I've probably been smearing it as I go. Mm-hmm. 
think I'm gonna make some little white spots up here. They're gonna be subtle. Just give this area a little more oomph. Because <laughs> it's kind of boring up here. I really love this pen. This is the best pen ever. Yes. I was using the Uniball. Um, is it roll, Jelly Roll? Oh, I never worked. I've bought so many of those. That, that half the time they didn't work off the bat and then the ones that did work didn't last long okay I think I'm done I'm gonna take the tape off Ta -da! Re big reveal go Frustration. Yeah. One way to make this less tacky is by before you before taping it to the paper, kind of like tape it to your pants or your shirt, and it helps take off some of that tackiness. Okay, well I'm liking this. I really am. Ta-da! Whew. Okay. So what do you guys think? This is almost two hours, yeah, two hours, yeah, okay.